Finally, it's time to do the timing belts on the Ducati ST4. Welcome to Hack a Week. So the first thing is to get the timing belt covers off the engine. Let's see, I think this is a five millimeter, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, five millimeter Allen bolts. I'm just going to take all these off and then we'll start removing covers. That takes care of the upper one on the horizontal cylinder. You'll need a little extension to get at some of these. Let's see if we can get this one off without pulling the tank. Yes, indeed. Before I can pull this cover off, let's get the wire harness out of the way. Just three connectors there. You can disconnect your fuel lines from the tank and get them out of the way if you want. Or you can do what I'm gonna do here and just pull them up here out of the way. And then get them up pull them up tight to the frame, take a wire tie, and just put it around them. And we can just put this here to keep them pulled up out of the way, and then later, when we put everything back together, we'll just cut the wire tie and uh, put them back. So now they're all clear of everything. They're not touching the belt or anything like that. There's a little notch in this cover that lines up perfectly with the oil pressure sending unit and then the cover comes off. So here's the deal. Uh, this is the tensioner and it rotates to tension them it rotates this way counterclockwise. There's an offset to it. If this is a 22 millimeter uh, nut size right here and the lock nut holds it in place but uh, you need to put a 22 millimeter wrench on here as you loosen this up or there's the possibility that you can loosen the whole stud from the uh, from the case so um, problem is I don't have a 22 millimeter wrench around um, or a 7 8 7 8 is the same thing um, but I might Okay, this is way cool. A little backstory here. Um, I grew up like lower middle class, northern New York. My dad worked his ass off to raise me and my four brothers over a span of 18 years. Um, they lived a good life. They just didn't have a whole lot, you know, when they passed away. But um, one of the things I ended up getting from my dad was this little toolbox. It wasn't very big. It was only about like this big. By this big it's red it says wizard on the top <laughs> which is pretty cool wizard was a brand name for Western Auto it used to be a uh, auto uh, service place and they sold hardware and auto parts and bicycles and lawnmowers and things like that sort of like a miniature Sears in a way but uh, that's where I got my first bicycle by the way my dad bought it for me um, worked overtime for two weeks to pay for it I think it was about 14 he bought me that but anyway um, I got that toolbox. I've got some of those tools at uh, my workplace and it was a pretty minimal set of tools that we had around which is what fostered all the innovativeness in me and why I am the man I am today and the way I problem solve and work with what I've got at hand and all that came out of not having a lot of tools to work with. So I'm putzing around here looking for something to solve this problem. You know, it's, it's silly. It's just a 7 8 wrench. I could run down to the hardware store, come back in a half hour, and I'd have a 7 8 wrench here to do this, you know, but I just didn't feel like that. I was like, yeah, let's just see what I can do at hand. You know, that's, that's what I got going on here. So I uh, went out in the workshop and remembered, ah, oh, Dad's toolbox. Pulled some of the wrenches out of there. I have them at work. They date back to, like, the 50s. And uh, went digging through it. And sure enough, here is a Blue Point 7 8 wrench. 
the exact size I need. It was the only freaking wrench left in the box. The rest of them I have in my large toolbox at work. So thanks, Dad. Saved the day. And it fits right over the nut and should still allow me to get the 12 millimeter in there to tighten everything up at the same time. So it looks like I can get it on the tensioner, hold it in place, and yes indeed, get a 12 in there and tighten the thing up. Awesome. Thanks, Dad, for the uh, 1950-something 7 8 blue point wrench. Problem is, this won't go in there far enough, so I don't think Dad would mind if I modify his wrench, turn it into a special Ducati tool. So I'm going to get on the grinder and take away just a little bit of this. And that will allow this to sink in a little bit further. And I should be able to get the box and 12 millimeter wrench on there. Well, after a bunch of grinding, it looks like Dad's wrench is going to work okay. And indeed it does. I can get the 12 millimeter on there to loosen it up. All right, so we've got that ready to go. Next thing we're gonna do is remove the spark plugs so we can rotate the engine easier. It's a 5 8 socket with an extension on it. Got a shorter extension on this one to clear the fender. And it leaves just enough to get a ratchet on it. Okay. Over here on the left side of the engine, there's a cover that you can remove, and there's a special tool that goes in there to rotate the engine. I don't have that tool, but there is another way to do this. You just pretty much put the bike in gear. Okay, the bike is in first gear. I can just grab the back tire now, turn the wheel, and I can rotate the engine. You can see the clutch moving as I do this. So what I gotta do now is line up the timing marks. Now we need to line up the timing marks. We're gonna do the horizontal cylinder, that's where we start. There's a little white mark right there and there's a notch in the case right there. Right now it's almost lined up. Uh, let's see if I can just bump it a little further. I need to go the other way. Okay, now let's come up on it. Just bump it there with the wheel a little at a time. And one more. There we go. That is lined up with the notch, that white mark. Up here is a mark that lines up with a notch in the case there. There's a mark that lines up with a notch in the case here. This is top dead center on the horizontal cylinder. If we go 90 degrees from here, we'll be at top dead center on the vertical cylinder. Now that I've got everything lined up at top dead center, we're gonna loosen up the tensioner. And it's very important that you hang on to it with this 22 millimeter wrench, in this case a 7 8 modified. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> so we wanna hang on to that. Again, reason being, if you loosen this without that, there's the chance that you may loosen the stud from the head and we don't want that. So let's hang on to it and break it loose. All right, now that's, that's totally loose. So we can rotate it so that the offset part is away from the belt and that is where it's at its loosest point. Now I wanna make sure that that stud did not loosen up and it doesn't look like it. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this off. This whole procedure applies to the vertical cylinder as well. But right now we're gonna focus on the horizontal. There's a washer here to pull off. And then the tensioner comes off. And now the belt's free to be pulled off and changed. And before you take the belt off, put a, take a, some kind of paint pen and put a white mark on the actual belt tooth that lines up with the timing marks. The reason you're doing that is that so you can take the old belt, you can count the number of teeth that are between the marks here 
and then count the number of teeth that are between the marks here just to make really sure that you've got it exactly where it needs to be when you put it all back together. So now this belt can come off just by taking it off down here and there we go. So I noticed something about the stud that holds the tensioner on the horizontal cylinder on this engine. Um, they can possibly loosen up, that's why you hold the uh, whole assembly with the 22 millimeter wrench when you're loosening it. This one has a small pin in it right there. It's just a tiny roll pin that's been pushed in right into the housing that it goes into, so there's no way that that one can back out. I guess you would have to drift that pin out to do that. So, hmm, well, that's good news. We'll see if that's on the vertical cylinder, which we're going to take the belt off from next. Okay, let's hold this with Dad's custom tool. And we'll get the 12 millimeter on there. See if I can get this a little more out of my way. Loosen this up. <clears throat> and then we're going to take that nut off. Then we'll slide the tensioner off. There's just barely enough room to get it out of there. And then we'll check that stud out. See if it has the pin. These Fuji nuts, you're supposed to replace. Fuji style lock nuts, they're called. And it's a 12 millimeter uh, wrench size, 8 millimeter nut. And they are available. I've got some uh, got some coming from US Desmo. And I don't have them here today, but what I'm going to do is put blue Loctite on it just for a little peace of mind until I get the new ones and I can get back in here and just replace them later. So that's off. Let's slide this tensioner off. And this cam is probably going to bump off from the lobe because it's under a little bit of of uh, tension that'll just barely make it out. The frame is flattened right in this area to allow this. Now we get that out of there. Put that aside. And then we get the belt off. We'll slide the belt off from this top cam first. And I know it's gonna turn a little. So I've got my Honda tool here, the one I built for the Honda CB750 clutch. And I know it fits because I checked and it will jump off from that lobe. You can see it's a little bit spring loaded. There's no springs in there but there's a small spring that keeps tension on everything. So now we can slide this belt out like so. Let's get a little light on this and see Nope, no pin. This one has no pin on it. It's a 19 millimeter wrench size. I don't know if I can get a box end in there, that would certainly be nicer to loosen it with. They aren't that tight. Well, that one, it's tight. Um, might not be a bad idea to pull it off anyway and put a little bit of uh, Loctite on it. And there we go. Let's see if it had any Loctite. Looks like it had something on it, not Loctite though. But we're gonna go ahead and put some Loctite on there and put it back in. Cleaned off the threads on the wire wheel on my grinder, the bench grinder, and get some red Loctite on it and we're going to screw it back in. Red Loctite applied and we're going to tighten it back up and the spec on this is 19 foot pounds which is not crazy tight. I mean it's only an 8 millimeter stud. I'm going to flip the gas tank up a little here, get myself a little bit of slack. So I can get on this a little better. That 
should be plenty tight. Let's get the horizontal cylinder belt back on. I've pre-marked where the uh, white marks were on the other belt, same one here. Um, I think it was 37 teeth here to here, 13 teeth here to here. Let's rotate this around so that it's at the mark it's supposed to be. And if I'm careful and don't bump that, it's not going to move out of the way. I'll get the belt down through here and get it on to the drive gear first. And I'm going to line that up with the white mark down here. And there we go. Got it lined up on the mark and I'm going to take a flat blade screwdriver and just gently wedge it in there. What that's going to do for me is keep the teeth from jumping out of that gear. Sprocket is actually the proper term. All right, now we'll go up here, get it around this idler, which feels good by the way, bearing feels fine. And we're gonna get it on this first one with the white dot on the dot that's on the sprocket. Okay, and we're gonna pull that around good and tight. Now with a brand new belt, you may see that it won't line up perfect but what you're after is to get it as close as you can without going radically the other direction. And my other sprocket just jumped out of place on me. I'll roll that back around. I don't have a freaking half inch ratchet here. It's at work. I need to buy one for the house toolbox. And let's get that white mark on there. around the rest of the way. Get it on the other side of that stud. Now I'm gonna move this belt out on the sprocket just a little bit because having it out away from there a little is gonna help when I go to put this tensioner back into place. All right, I'm gonna get the tensioner up here slide it in here and what I want is the hole to be pointing that way and the offset part to be pointing down that way and I'm going to get it up in here and then catch the belt first I'm going to get it up around the stud a little bit in fact I'm going to give you a better view here so I've got it where it's over the stud and get the belt in place get it as close as I can to getting on that stud and if I take a screwdriver and just gently pry against the case a little give it a push and there it goes it's on the stud and that's that now we can put the washer back on and as I mentioned I'm going to put just a little bit of blue like Loctite on this just for some insurance until I get the new um, Fuji style lock nuts. Get back on it with the 22 millimeter, in this case a 7 8 and I'm just going to put a little tension on it temporarily, just enough that it feels tight not loose is what you're after and then we'll tighten this down just enough to hold it in place for now let's just double check those marks one more time if you see down in there you can see that the white mark on the belt is lined up with the white mark on the sprocket and then we come up here and we're as close as we can get to lining up that tooth with the notch and same thing there now we can get the horizontal cylinder back on 
pretty much same procedure here. Got the white marks. Get this one on first. Come around here. Now this one's going to be a bit easier because the uh, cams aren't going to try to jump out of place on me. And I'm going to put that screwdriver in here like I did last time just to keep that belt in place for me. And then get this around the other side of that stud. The marks are all lining up okay. Remember to keep this out just a little bit. And then we'll get this caught on the belt. This one's a little easier because you can see it and do it with your bare hands. The washer, bit of blue Loctite, cheap insurance. Put a little tension on this. I'm gonna pull the screwdriver out. Double check the marks. Everything's lined up there, lined up there, and lined up there. We're ready to tune it. Here is G Strings, the uh, guitar tuner app on my phone. Got it at the Google Play Store. It's free. It's got some ads up at the top. That's why it's free. But it's a really good, accurate uh, guitar tuner. Better than some that I've bought at music stores. We are after 110 hertz measured right on this section of the belt when you pluck it like a guitar string. So you fire this up, put it up there with the microphone next to the belt and pluck it. Reads 141 hertz. That is too tight. So we're gonna back this off a little bit. Remember I've got this just barely snug so I can move this a little bit easily. And we'll check it again. It's 124 hertz. We're after 110. 115. 110. Now we can put the spanner back on there and we're gonna tighten that up now what we're gonna do is rotate the engine 90 degrees so that the vertical cylinder is at top dead center and everything is unloaded on the cams and then we'll do the tension on this one so we need to rotate the engine 90 degrees so let's see what if we count the teeth here we should be able to figure out exactly where 90 degrees would be there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. There's 18 notches. So let's see if we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's directly across. So there's 180 degrees. And then if we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So basically what we're on is one of the teeth. So if I mark this, then I have one, two, three, four teeth. One, two, three, four teeth. So there's my 90 degree marks. We can get rid of that one. So where the red marks are. So now I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees to get it at top dead center on the vertical cylinder. So I wanna line up that red mark with the notch on the clutch cover. There we go. Now to get my fuel lines out of the way, I'm gonna put the wire tie back around here just to hold them up out of the way for me. And then we're gonna go ahead and 
pluck the other belt and we need to do that right in this same section here got the app fired up so we'll put it right up there next to it we're pretty close on this one we're at 109 so it just needs a bit of tension and probably not very much and yeah, now it's at 112 110. Okay, now we're going to lock that down somewhat tight. This is not the final tightening that we're going to do. And we're going to rotate the engine around a few times to stretch the belts, seat them in a little bit, and then we're going to go back and do this whole procedure again on the vertical and the horizontal cylinders at least three times till we feel like we've got it nailed down pretty good then we'll go ahead and put the covers back on okay time to rotate things by hand a few turns all right we're coming up on top dead center for the horizontal so let's take care of that one first okay let's check the tension on that so it's showing 117 so a little tighter than it was we'll rotate 90 degrees check the vertical and it's right at 110 111 so I'm going to rotate it a few more times and check it again I'm satisfied with the tensions so now I'm going to tighten these up I don't have a torque wrench to put on them because I can't get one on the other one I'm just going to use my hand but about 18 foot pounds tight get them tight let's get some miles on it and we'll see how it goes from there I'm gonna put the covers back on and call it good when I was putting this together uh, I noticed that the gasket around the outside here was a little messed up so I ordered another one I'm throw a new one on here I took this out for a quick test drive the other day and it runs out great Holy crap, put a bunch of torque. So today I'm going to put this on and I've got some mirrors to put on and I've also got a coolant overflow bottle to put on that's kind of a uh, novel approach that you'll see in a minute. There's a metal insert on these that the uh, bolt tightens up against right in these holes and on this one, one of them is missing. so. That's why it's kind of all chewed up in that area. Goodbye. Let's see, we're gonna get this new one on. And there's a bolt there and there that these empty holes line up with. And then everything else lines up with a hole and it slips onto the lip of the case. Should just sit there by itself when it's in the proper position. And we put it all back together now. These are six millimeter bolts, so all they need is about nine or ten foot pounds of torque. Let's move on to that coolant bottle. So the coolant bottle needs to mount right here. I've got the hose already on the uh, outlet. I shortened the outlet a bit because it's going to loop back like this, and I wanted to just leave it a little more of a place to loop instead of it sticking way out. I've already um, drilled these out for the mounting points and I've got the uh, bottle over here all prepped and ready to go I had to make a special uh, bracket for the back of it here 
it's all sealed up and I've got the little indicator on the side of how full it is and well it is an Italian bike so what the heck let's have a little fun with some Partana Olio Extra Virgin di Oliva extra virgin olive oil that'll look good on there so just a simple matter of mounting it up here and uh, putting a couple of nuts on and tightening them up that's about it and here's the little cap for it it'll go right on there like so and I drilled a hole in it that's just big enough for this hose and the hose is long enough to go to the bottom of the can I'm going to put that in there where there's no kinks and I can push it down flush with the surface which is kind of cool and uh, I think that's about as tight as I want that bend so there we go all installed these uh, holes for this indicator tube were drilled just a little bit smaller than the tube I poked them through and then I sealed it with a bit of silicone and then the bracket on the back that holds everything in place has a bit of silicone on the rivets where they go into the can to make sure nothing leaks and it looks like that's going to hold up on there just fine and uh, it's color coordinated with the bike and I think it's just really cool that I got an olive oil can mounted on the bike next up I got some cheap ass mirrors these uh, were like I don't know less than 25 bucks shipped and they're kind of cheesy uh, this mount here in the back I put a little bit of silicone grease on because it was a little difficult to move but they're gonna work okay and they're gonna mount right here where there's this hole that runs through and I've got a nice um, Allen head bolt, a button head Allen bolt that'll come up through there. Pokes up just high enough to mount into the mirror. So we'll get the mirrors mounted up. And I'm going to take it out for another ride because it's just a beautiful day out there today in North Carolina. It's about 70 degrees. And there they are mounted up. They don't look too bad. Not bad for, I think, less than 20 bucks. I don't know. They were maybe 25 with shipping pretty cheap but they're um, they're functional and they've got a pretty good field of view some of the cheap mirrors have got these really weird shapes that come to a point and they look cool but as far as functionality goes there's not a lot of mirror area I want mirrors where I can see what's behind me I put them on the bike for a reason so I can freaking see what's going on behind my ass
Well, that was fun. Look forward to more of that. <clears throat> so, first impressions. Um, the mirrors kind of suck. I've got some bar end mirrors I might try putting on here. I think they'll work better. These aren't out far enough. And, you know, my arms are in the way. I gotta lean over to see behind me. I love to just glance down and know just what's behind me in traffic. That's just the kind of driver I am. I, I wanna know what's going on behind me. And I wanna be able to do it just with a quick glance, not looking down and having to move and take my eye off what's up front. So I'll probably change out the mirrors. Um, finding neutral's a bit of a bitch, but I think that's probably the nature of the beast with the dry clutch. I'll get used to it. Um, a lot of it is just making sure you're in neutral before you come to a stop while everything's still rolling. Get it in neutral. Uh, what else? The rear brakes howled a little bit at first, but after I got on them a bit, um, they're okay now. I think that might have been just a little bit of a glaze or corrosion buildup, whatever. Um, Everything else seems to be just fine. The front brakes are really easy to modulate. They stop really well. The thing handles great. It turns into the corners just like all you gotta do is think about it. Yeah, very nice handling. Kind of reminds me of what the BMW was like, only it feels 300 pounds lighter, even though it's only about 130 or 40 pounds lighter. Uh, with all the fairing work off from it anyway, I think stock this weighs about five 20, 510 or 520, something like that. The BMW weighed 630, so it was pretty heavy and it was very top heavy. Um, it's fun, it just feels great out there. I mean, it's the thump from those two cylinders is phenomenal. And the torque when you roll it on, it's like you better be hanging on. Um, it's all torque, all the way through the range, uh, from the low end on up. Lots and lots of fun. Seat feels okay for just a short ride. We'll see what it's like on a longer ride. I'm gonna take it out this weekend on maybe a 100 mile trip just to get an idea what it's like. And then the weekend after that, I'm driving it over to Charlotte. That's probably about a two hour and 20 minute drive, something like that. So that'll be its first really good road trip. I've looked at the chain. It's a little bit sloppy. I need to crank that up just a little bit. It's got a little bit too much play in it. It's supposed to have around 30 some odd millimeters. It's probably closer to 40 um, quite a bit. But the chain looks good. Everything seems to be just fine on the bike and working great, which is awesome. So along the way here, uh, something pretty cool happened. Ichiban Moto has actually certified me I am uh, now <clears throat> the International Certified Motorcycle Builders Association. That would be the ICMBA. Uh, Hack a Week TV is actually officially certified now as per uh, Ichiban Moto. So there's my certificate. And um, also, YouTube Certified Motorcycle Builder. Thanks, Ichiban. Got some bar end mirrors here. Just got here today. Got them from Amazon, and I think they're gonna work out great on the Ducati because they've got an eight millimeter opening right there, and it's got a nice countersunk, whoops, eight millimeter bolt that comes with it. And on the end of the bars here is a eight millimeter bolt that holds on these bar ends. So if I take that off, I should be able to just bolt these right on. All I had to do was cut about 20 millimeters off from that bolt and they bolt right on to the end of the stock bars. That's a beautiful thing. Those are so much better and I can actually see behind me at a glance. I like them a lot better than those things. So we're here for another wrap up on part six uh, on the second video. The first one had some mistakes in it. Big shout out to Brad the Bike Boy and at Clidian, these two guys pointed out some things where I made some errors on the timing belts, mostly on that tensioner stud, how important it is that that does not loosen up. That could be disastrous. So thanks a lot for that one. And uh, at Clidian has been a big help along the way on this one. And uh, you know who you are out there. Thanks a lot, you guys, both of you. Um, every time I do this stuff and I do videos, I'm always open to suggestions from people. I don't always do it right. I learn as much from you as you learn from me. That's how it works with this YouTube channel. So here we are at the end of this second video that I've uploaded on part six with the corrections. 
And hopefully now when people come and look at how to do the timing belts for a ST4 or 916 engine, they'll get proper information thanks to some YouTube feedback. So, as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. And until next time...